I was a bully in the sense that you just that, that I tried to control the narrative, mm -hmm. and if I didn't like what somebody said, and, and for whatever reasons in my own head, whether I viewed that as somebody being disloyal or as, as a, a friend turning on you or whatever, I tried to control that and said that you know, that's a lie. They're liars. Lance Armstrong there recounting how he bullied people into keeping quiet about his blood doping and use of performance enhancing drugs. And we heard what he told Oprah, but what did his body language say? Susan Constantine joining me now. She's a body language expert. Uh, Susan, thank you so much for being with us. Listen, let's watch this exchange real quickly and then I want to get your thoughts. Okay. And that's, um, no, I didn't. That was true. That was true. 11 of the 2000 tour, stopping at a hotel. Tyler Hamilton says you stopped at a hotel. Who How knew? did it all work? I, I viewed it as very simple. And for most of my career, there wasn't that much of that. Just, um, again, just trying to perpetuate the story. Um, Ferrari, and again, it's... it's uh, it's hard to talk about some of these things. All right, so we've obviously strung together. There are all these moments where he has, he's been touching his face. What is your takeaway of that particular move that he did over and over? Well, the touching of the mouth around the mouth area is that there's words that he wants to express, but he's trying to keep them inside. So the fact that he's kind of contemplating what he's going to say with a hand over no. the mouth is exactly what he's trying to do. Contemplate what he's trying to say. It's like scooping those words up in the net and trying to keep them inside of his mouth. Is there, I know you told us at one point that you thought he seemed arrogant. Is there a part of the interview that stood out to you that would emphasize that? Well, there's that other point too, he kind of does a little shoulder shrug, um, that comes with deception. But here's the thing is what he does when he comes across being arrogant, he shows what we call a contempt gesture. It's like a smirk, it's when the mouth goes off to one side like this. Okay, he we're gonna see it here, I think. Yes. If you, hold on just a second, let's certainly go ahead and run this um, piece of sound. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Yes or no, was one of those banned substances EPO? Yes. Did you ever blood dope or use blood transfusions to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Did you ever use any other banned substances like testosterone, uh, cortisone, or human growth hormone? Yes. Yes or no, in all seven of your Tour de France victories, did you ever take banned substances or blood dope? Yes. In your opinion, was it humanly possible to win the Tour de France without doping? Seven times in a row. Not in my opinion. Okay, there's kind of the smirk. What do you, what do you make of it? Okay, it's, first of all, that expression is what we call a micro gesture. It just slightly slants to the side. It's usually after a statement. What that means is moral superiority. Uh, that's where contempt comes in. They think that they're duping you. They think they know more than you. They have a higher level of superiority. And then he covers his mouth. But you can see that he was very uncomfortable in that, um, in that conversation. He answered those questions and lasered him, no, 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 no. But when you're looking at his body language at the very end when he's talking about those, uh, the, the, the seven uh, different wins, that's where you saw a change in his body language. He shifted more, he covered his mouth, and he had a smirk. And oftentimes throughout the interview, you would even hear a giggle. And a giggle is du duping delight, meaning that he actually had some arousal duping you. Oh my gosh. Well, there's one more piece of sound I want you to listen to to get your your thoughts on this and it has something to do with his his posture. Do we have that? Okay. We do, we don't. We can see it. Okay, I'm going to show it to you here uh, in a second. I think it has something to do with his legs crossed and his posture. Yes. And I know that you believe I've heard you say that he, you think he was giving mixed signals throughout this interview. Uh, he had, I thought it seemed like a pretty confident posture, but uh, he was using small gestures, and I'm wondering what that suggests to you. 
Well, again, gestures and body language, when you see these little micro gestures, that's a form of leakage. You know, your thoughts create emotions, your emotions leak out through your body language. When you're trying to deceive someone, you're going to see some leakage. It might be just not deception, but it's also when they're feeling anxiety. So he, he crosses his legs like a gentleman would do, which is a confident gesture, but then he keeps his hands very close to him. So he holds his hands in his lap, making his body language very small, which is contradictory to some of this confidence. A confident person will expand and use their body language and have more open posture. We didn't see this. He tended to close his body language up. And at one point, he actually grabbed his leg, one leg, and with both of his hands. And it's a bracing effect, like as if you're bracing for some really bad news. So it was a protection uh, response. You're going to be watching tonight for part two? I'm going to. You betcha. I, I thought so. Okay, Susan, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Christy. Sure, take care.